Turn with, turn with me to the book of Luke, if you would. <clears throat> Luke chapter 4. Get my throat clear. <clears throat> Luke chapter 4. Uh, speak about church. Isn't it? Maybe you don't look at it this way, but isn't it good to know that you can come to church and you can have the rotation of preachers that are here and, and sometimes somewhere along the line you're going to get a, a gut check spiritually that you never expected to have because you don't hear a lot of these things in other churches. So somebody said, did, did, you, did you know what, what Jonathan, what, what, the, what some of those verses were? I said, yeah, of course I did. And I said, but not ahead of time. I said, it's God's word, isn't it? <laughs> and, uh, and so it wasn't a criticism. It was just like, wow, you know, but that's good. You know, you don't want to become bored here. So, so, um, so uh, I, don't, I don't question where God leads me to go. And I think there were times when I did because I had a program in mind. And, and, and with the program in mind, then I said, no, you know, uh, you're, just, you're just trying to get me to get behind and I'll never, I'll never catch up. So in all likelihood, I was supposed to do wisdom tonight and it wasn't about to happen. And something came up and I don't know why it came up or what it has to do with anything other than the Lord wanted me to go this way. So that's what I'm going to do. Luke 4, in verse 31, <clears throat> and came down to Capernaum, he was up in Nazareth, the city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, <clears throat> for his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and heard him not. And they were all amazed, and spake among themselves, saying, What a word this is, is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him went into every place of the country round about. So I have a little word, of, little word of prayer and then we'll start. Father, we just thank you for the request tonight. I pray we, we understand the importance of interceding and that just saying something here tonight as a, a representative nature of all of us uh, is not the end of the prayer, but just the beginning and that we will continue to keep these requests before you. And hopefully we'll, we'll see answers to them, and they'll be favorable. And uh, we're, just, we're just grateful. Thank you for your word, uh, for what we've just read. And I do pray that it would be something that <clears throat> has some connection with us. Uh, if not today, then maybe tomorrow. Maybe that something happened yesterday. I don't know, but whatever it is, Father, uh, I'm not here to give my, my version, my opinion. I'm here to give out your word and what you think on the subject. So we just pray that you to oversee and superintend and all of this. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, in Mark chapter 1, verse 21 to 28, you can read almost the identical account. The arrangement is a little different, but otherwise it's, it's pretty much the same. So, at the synagogue in Nazareth, uh, which precedes Christ going to Capernaum, his teaching so infuriated the people that, that they sought to do him bodily harm. If you go up in chapter 4, in verse 28, and all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust them out of the city. <clears throat> led him into the brow of the hill whereon their city was built that they might cast him down headlong. 
but he passing through the midst of them went his way. So it wasn't his time, obviously, but they wanted to kill him. And so now he meets with the Jews again in Capernaum in the synagogue. And uh, if you look in Mark chapter 1, 21 and 22, it gives the, the arrangement of the, of the, the departure and, uh, and arrival. And so we read that his, his teaching astonished them. If you are ever in a place where you don't get teaching and you suddenly get teaching, you have the same, you have the same, you walk away with the same thing. It, it just, that's the nature of this. And, uh, and it said that he didn't, he taught them with authority, not like the Jews dictate in the Judaism. They didn't teach with authority. They may have said things from the Old Testament and so forth, but with him it was authoritative. So it's then at this, at, at this incident in this, in this synagogue that this particular incident takes place. So I want to address something first. The people that attended the synagogue in Nazareth and the people that attended the synagogue here in Nazareth uh, or let's say in any of the synagogues Christ went to uh, weren't necessarily saints of God. They were Jews of the Judea, Judaistic system. They weren't teaching salvation. They were just teaching, teaching Judaism. They were steeped in what the scribes and Pharisees taught them. They knew nothing else. So you have the Lord coming down, and he's take, give, giving you the, the physical, the spiritual instructions from the same things maybe they had heard before, but they had never heard this. And, and so it, it, it causes a reaction. When he speaks, he does speak with power. And, and the unclean spirits, because we're, we're going to deal with that, uh, that are present, are sure to notice and speak out. They don't sit silently when, 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 when he's there and these things are, are, are being, being said. So the case can be made. As long as the word was not preached or taught spiritually in the power of the Holy Spirit, those, clean, those unclean spirits would stay quiet. There's nothing, there was nothing going on to cause them alarm. Nothing was being said. No, no identification, uh, no nothing. And so, I don't, I don't know how you feel, but I don't think any real work is being done for Christ without the adversary getting upset. And when we're going to do things, and do things as scripture says, I think that upsets him. I uh, said this before, I don't think to Satan it matters that you're sitting here and you've got a Bible open. And it happens to be King James Version. I don't, I don't think that bothers him one bit. It's what you do with that that bothers him. And, and what is said to do with that that bothers him. And what you learn and what you, you get at, even at home that would bother him. So I want you to notice first, there are some enemies here. There are two. Uh, first of all, in verse 33, and in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice. So the first one is the spirit of an unclean spirit. And the second one is the man possessed with the unclean spirit. How do you know there's two? Well, look at the verse in, in verse 34, saying, let us alone. We're only, we're only addressing one spirit, but the spirit controls the man, and they are as one. And so he said, let us alone. He was in control. The man wasn't in control. So the unclean spirit uses the will and mouth of this man for his purposes. And he speaks of the man, again, as one with himself. It's scary when, when you think about it. Let us alone. What have we to do with, with, with thee? Not sing, it's not singular. What have I to do with you? It's, it's plural. People who are at enmity with the work and purposes of the Lord, you know who they're in league with? They're in league with the devil. And there's a lot of them. 
an awful lot of them in an awful lot of places. And unless there's some form of a divorce of the will and interest, uh, the doom of the will of the the doom of the devil or devils will also be theirs. And yet we have people today that think you can tinker and toy with unclean spirits. You know, the, the who is it, Parker Brothers, the Ouija board? I don't know if they, uh, things like that and, and some of the, the uh, games you can play on, on video and so forth. Uh, the uh, Pokemon stuff. <laughs> Do you remember when we had the incident of the Pokemon people all outside? Because it was designated as, as some kind of trophy. And so I, you know, the guy came up after that, drove up, and he said, why are you making such a big thing of this? I said, what are you talking about? He says, well, I'm saved. This is just a stupid worldly game. I said, really, is that, that's it? A stupid worldly game. There's no, there's no spiritual entity involved. I said, come on, and you're saved. And then he insulted me. Uh, and then came back later one day and when I was in here and apologized. I'm glad he apologized because he was wrong. But, you know, anyway, uh, you, you, can't, you cannot mess with this stuff. You just can't, and it's everywhere. All right, so I want you to watch the, the language. In uh, verse 34, it, <clears throat> saying, this is the, the, the you know, he's, the, the unclean spirit is indicating they're both speaking, but really it's the unclean spirit speaking through him. <clears throat> and I'm not going to take these in order, so I'll read the verse 34, and then we'll, I'll take, for, I'm going to jumble up the order. Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. I want to take these separately. So the first thing is that he acknowledges Christ's true character in verse 34. I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. So this confession of this unclean spirit puts to shame the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons and the Christian science and Islam and Unitarian infidels who deny the deity of Christ. This evil being, this evil being confesses both to Christ's deity and his humanity. What a, what a rebuke to all of these systems that deny the Christ. Christ as the Son of God was given, John 3.16, or we could use Isaiah 9.6, uh, but the son of humanity was born, again, Isaiah 9, 6. So the, the acknowledgement is of his deity, his true character, who he is. All right, here's the second one. They question his mission. And in that verse, art thou come to destroy us? Now, you wonder, does this, does this unclean devil judge Jesus Christ to be like himself, only coming to steal and to kill? Art thou come to judge us? You know, God's grace, how far above is God's grace the thoughts of the unclean and the sinful? What was your opinion? How did you regard God and God's word and, and Christ and all that if you didn't get saved as a young child when you were, when you were growing up? I doubt seriously it wasn't far removed from this. God is, God is mad at us. He's, a, he's not a loving God. He's an unloving God. He's cruel, unmerciful. No, not, not like that. Praise God that he, that he came to seek and to save us who were lost. I think if you read Isaiah 53, in light of the devil's question, you too will conclude sin is of the devil. Adam and Eve were perfectly fine until somebody got in the way and, and prodded somebody to commit sin. Sin is of the devil, it always has been. They question his mission. Here's number three, again in verse 34. 
they, they shun his presence. What have we to do with thee? And he knows there's, there's, there is certainly nothing in common between that which is holy and that which is unclean. 2 Corinthians 6.15, what communion hath light with darkness? How would you answer the question? You better answer none. There's no communion with light and darkness. They're completely opposites. So Satan and his armies uh, of devils will forever hate the light because the light reproves their deeds. Hold your place there. Go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And look here in, in verse uh, 21. Verse, chapter 3, verse 21. <clears throat> Verse 20, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. They hated Christ. The world hated Christ. The Jews hated Christ. Religion hated Christ. <clears throat> and they hate us. They still do. Nothing's changed. Nothing at all. <clears throat> All right, here's the, before I get to the fourth one, it would be better <clears throat> to have to do with Christ now in mercy and grace in this age, in this dispensation, than to delay that and to die when one has to deal with him in judgment. This is what, after you're saved, why you don't understand people who are lost reject the Lord. You can't understand it. And once you, once you are saved, suddenly you can understand it. If I died, <clears throat> if I died before I got to the day when I sat down with, with the pastor in Miami, uh, that's, that I would have died and, and faced the judgment of God. And ultimately the white throne judgment. I would, be, I would have been in hell f from that day forward until now and through the, through the millennium. And then stand before him as, at the white throne judgment and cast into the lake of fire. That's how serious all of this is. Uh, so, we have to know there is there's no identification between that which is evil and that which is which good. And, and the sad part is everybody, everything is combining together today. Uh, I don't want to go off there. Okay, number four, in verse 34. Uh, what does he say? Okay, he, they want to seek rest in their sin. Now, I, this, this could take us a long time if I had to stay to the point. Let us alone. Leave me alone. And yet, how many people who are alone are happy? Many people say, just leave me alone. So God leaves them alone. And there you are, with just yourself and no one else. And you're not happy. You're just not. There, there is still that desire of those belonging to the devil and uncleanness. Leave me alone in my sin. Just leave me alone. You and I are not here to leave them alone. We never won. The Lord didn't leave them alone. The heaven, they, the heaven, the only heaven they seek is, is here and to be uh, allowed to, to lie peaceably, I, I'll put it this way, lie peaceably on, on the bed of their carnal pleasures. Leave me alone. We went into a, a house filled with homosexuals back in Miami when we were, when I was doing pest control. And I was working with, uh, the guy was showing me, you know, what to do and how to do it. And they were flaunting that and flaunting that and flaunting that. And, and even then, I had enough common sense to know, you know, well, all they're saying is, hey, leave me alone in my sin. 
Romans chapter 1, doesn't it say the same thing, basically? They, knowing that their, their deeds are going to be judged, continue to have pleasure in doing them. They don't, they don't want to be reproved at all. And so, you know, here comes, here we are knocking at their door. And, uh, and so this, this, just happened, just, this just happened to happen when we knocked on the door. And uh, they cried out, hey, don't trouble us, we're in bed. <laughs> but that's the whole idea, don't bother me. We go, you go to the doors today, hey, don't, I don't want to hear it, I just don't want to be bothered. Do you know if the Lord Jesus Christ had come to give men peace in their sins, this godless world would have received him gladly? And we could have what some churches are now having, sin plus church. Sin in church. Sin while in church. Sin conducting church. And saying, leave us alone. I just read an ad for, for uh, some, pro some program that they're having in Tampa. It came in the mail. And it showed the pictures of all these people. But these pictures, these pictures haven't changed for 40 or 50 years. They're all the same. They always look the same. They always look angry. They always look discontent. They always looked unkept. And they're saying, you've got, to bring, you've got to bring these lost people out so that they can trust the Lord. Who? What Lord? Okay, so first were the enemies. There were two. The man himself, because I think the man himself obviously had a problem with sin. I don't think he was an innocent bystander, although there have been. And that he was an open vessel, and there was some, something to come in and possess it. And I don't know that he welcomed it necessarily, but it took over. I don't see him fighting this, but agreeing with it. So the enemies. And then secondly, in verse 35, the words of the Lord. Verse 35. And Jesus rebuked him. Jesus rebuked him. It's a convicting word. Hold thy peace. Hold thy peace. Or we could, down, we could uh, take the grammar down to our level. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Just be quiet. Don't say anything. Have you found that sinners need to be silenced before we can make any progress? And these, of course, are foul, foul uh, beings, and it just needs to be stopped. So the word of God turns self-justification into self-condemnation. And that's part of, we're not trying to, to kill the person, we're trying to awaken the person through the power of the Holy Spirit. And they, have to, they have to see sin in the light of, of his holiness. And if they do, that is enough to shut, shut the mouth of any demon, any devil. Remember, even the lepers would, would walk around. What could they say but unclean, unclean? All right, so it was a convicting word. Verse 35, it was a converting word. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Come out of him. The gospel is the power of, of, of Christ unto salvation of God unto salvation. And so we look and we see there's not, there's not a spirit too evil for the overcoming power of Jesus Christ. And there's some bad spirits out there. There's no soul too unclean for his cleansing blood. And there's no thought, however proud or polluted, that he can't cast out. Didn't he save you? Oh, I, well, we weren't that bad. Really. You're, we're all put into one category. Sinners. And it, and it covers the, the entire scope of sin. 
Listen, as saved people, I was talking to Frank today about something, I forget what it was, and I said, you know, in all areas, we who are saved should reckon ourselves dead to sin. I mean, we, we know we have the flesh, but we also have the indwelling Holy Spirit. Now, who is stronger? Well, somebody says, well, they're equal. No, they're not equal. You're talking about the holiness of God. The third person of the Trinity inside of us is stronger than my flesh. It, it's a choice there. And we have to look, we have to look at, at ourselves the way God looks at us. So we have to reckon these things dead to us. All right, thirdly, here's the work of the devil, verse 35. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, this would be the last time the devil would throw this guy. And uh, when, they, when, when they say throw him, they mean throw him. I think I've told you this. Harry Ironside was preaching in Moody Church when it was a good church. And he was about to give the invitation, and some kid came out, young man, and he was walking down, and he was babbling and stuff, and then all of a sudden, he was thrown up into the air and cast back about five feet. Everybody was pretty scared. I would be scared. <laughs> and so it was, it was a, they were devils, they were devil. And, you know, they preached the gospel. I don't know that they want him to the Lord, but it was something that Ironside was saying. Devil, did, how, how easy does the devil give up? Not too easy. He would, he would rather render a person useless by throwing him down, hopefully hurting him. And so you already know this. He promises you happiness. He promises you success. He promises you the world, but he gives you sorrow, and he gives you disease, and he gives you sin and pain. He doesn't paint the picture you think he paints, because he's a deceiver. And, and these, again, when you're, when you're open to these kind of things, you're, you're more vulnerable than, say, a person that's not open. All right, verse 35, we see the victory of the Lord here, <clears throat> and he says, and hurt him not. Hurt him not, so the, the unclean spirit came out so the man's soul might be rescued from the destroying power of the devil and given an opportunity to be saved, to believe. Some people think that, oh, casting out the devil saved him. No, it didn't. It cast out the devil. But the guy still needed to be, to be saved. When, when we look at John 15, 3, you're clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. It's through the word. But that's talking to saved people, not unsaved people. So in verse 36, we see these onlookers again. In, in the beginning, they were astonished. Now they're amazed. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, what a word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. So guess what? It's possible to be amazed, astonished, at the authority and power of the Lord Jesus Christ, and still be lost. It's, it's possible to believe that he died on the cross for all mankind. He paid the, he paid the debt of sin for all mankind and be lost. It's possible to believe the resurrection and be lost. A lot of people, <clears throat> lot, lots of people will come to a church on, a, on Easter to hear the resurrection preached and say, oh, I believe in the resurrection, but they've never trusted Christ as Savior, which is crazy. I was one of those. I believed he rose from the dead, but I wasn't saved. I never knew that I could be saved. Many are confounded at the, the manifest power of the gospel and yet will remain lost in their sins. They say it's too easy. Or they say the opposite, it's too legalistic, too restrictive, too many rules. It's nonsense. 
foolishness. 1 Corinthians 1.18 Well, let me say this. This is, I'm kind of late on this, but you know, sin is coming to town. Sin has come to town, and it's going to continue to come to town. It's come to the schools, it's come to our workplaces, it's come to our churches. And the admission of that gives you an advantage because it's time to position yourself as one of Christ's own, if in fact you are. And you settle the issue once and for all, and then you walk in the spirit who indwells you, and who leads you, and who teaches you. You have to make that, you have to make that the, the way and, and the position you're going to hold to. You have to. As a, as a believer, Speaking of me, as a, as a teacher, as a pastor, I don't look for trouble. I really don't. I think I've, I try to uh, do enough so that I can circumvent trouble and yet still get the same information out. I don't, I don't come down, I don't come out of here with a hatchet. And, it's, and, and I don't care who you are, I'm going to chop your heads off. But seriously, I've found that trouble comes looking for me. And in all likely trouble comes looking for you. And trouble comes probably for all of us and probably this church. And we better resolve how we're going to deal with it beforehand. Because it's coming. We know that as, as the gospel becomes less and less prominent and, and is diluted, changed, uh, included in, in other things, the more, the more activity will occur in the, in the occult. We have, we have churches practicing the occult under various different names. So it's found a home within. And once it finds a home within, it's, it's hard to get them out. So the idea is you don't let them in. Yeah. There's the examples. I mean, we can just keep going and going and going. And, I, and again, I have no idea why this is happening other than we're reaching a period of time where you, you can almost see, you can almost foresee the pit being un, unhooked. And I'm just, they're coming out of the pit. Because what used to be quiet, not, not advertised very much, is now just thrown in your face, thrown in your face. Even, even the so-called family-friendly hallmark, boasting about the, the size and the energy of the sodomite community that is now on board and they are now featuring major, major characters. So there, there again, you look and you say, okay, there goes another thing. And another thing, by, before long, you're not going to be able to be on the internet, the TV, the radio. <laughs> you're just going to have to get all, sadly, you're going to have to get all your information here. And if you get all your information here, you're way ahead of the game, right? So let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. <clears throat> How you manage to deal with, us, with people like us, I have no idea. But I'm grateful that you do. I'm grateful that you're, you're long-suffering. I'm grateful for the things that we have learned over the course of the years we've been saved, whether we've been saved a short time or a long time. And I know we've got a long way to go. We look for you to come at any moment. It, it appears that it's, that it's drawing closer and closer within the realm of a possibility that many of us may not have to die physically before you come. Uh, all of us would, I think, shout for joy about that. And yet at the same time, we're supposed to occupy till you come. And we can't allow the evil 
to win. And so I think we just need to examine ourselves and if there's evil things that are present, we've got to realize as safe people we can't be possessed, but we sure can be influenced and harassed. And we don't want that to happen either. So speak to our hearts as we continue on as pilgrims and strangers and give us confidence of what we have in Christ and who we are and yet to be of help to those who are very vulnerable. And if we happen across, happen across some of these situations, Father, you just give us the strength and character to deal, deal wisely and, and know what to do. Uh, we are not, we are not hunters of that which, of those which are evil. Uh, we are, we are people that want to see people, others saved, come to Christ, and enjoy the, the benefits that every one of us enjoy in Jesus Christ. So go with us as we go to our places. Uh, give us a good night's rest. Be with those who we're praying for tonight. Uh, I know Mark wanted to be here, but if he's driving, he's got a long drive ahead of him. Just give him safety as he goes back to his place. And as we go to our places as well, look forward to seeing uh, each other uh, Sunday, if not before. We're in the air. And we'd have to look really quick. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.